Caltagirone. We thought it was just a place to visit to kill time on the way back from the majestic Villa Romana del Casale. But what we thought was a small town in the brink of abandonment captured our hearts and taught us an important lesson. Come with us on this journey as we try to uncover the identity of the owner of an astonishing Roman villa and fall in love with a town too beautiful to be forgotten. It's a summer Sunday in Sicily, it's extremely hot, everyone's going to the beach and we're doing the opposite. We're venturing inland which is uncharted territory for us. Our first stop is the Villa Romana del Casale, an ancient Roman villa that boasts the richest, best preserved collection of Roman mosaics in the world. I really need a coffee because the drive was so long and exhausting. Maybe you can tell. <laughs> of course, with our coffee, we had to try something typical from this area. Casa delle Viaggina, which is this dough filled with chocolate, diced almonds, sugar, cinnamon, lemon, and a little bit of chickpea flour. Mm. Mm. Very yummy. This place has a very interesting history. So it was actually buried under a landslide in the 12th century, but locals in 1950, so about 70 years ago, found some traces, some small pieces of mosaics and other traces of the villa. They asked for help to an archeologist, Gentili, who started digging and realized that he might have found something big. And he did, because it's one of the biggest, best preserved villa of the late Roman Empire. The, the whole building is incredible, especially the floors, because they are decorated with mosaics. Huge floors, tiny, tiny pieces of mosaics, forming a lot of drawings. Still incredibly well preserved, despite being underground for so long. Can't wait to show you. This was the monumental entrance. So these were big arches with six columns showing a big entrance to the, to the villa. And you can see already the work with the mosaics um, in these little fountains here. And some frescoes here, you can see still the colors um, of the paintings. And now we're gonna make our way inside the villa and see the best preserved mosaics. This was a latrina, basically a giant toilet. And you can see even this part of the villa was meticulously decorated with mosaics. We still don't know who was the owner of the villa, but his identity might be revealed by a secret message in the mosaics of the main corridor. In every composition of these mosaics, we find a bird, which in Latin is spelled avis, and an M-shaped avi leaf, which in Latin is spelled hedera. And this might give us a hint on who was the owner of the villa. Aurelius Valerius Imperator Suffuctus Maximianus Hercules. The theory that the villa belonged to Maximianus is further supported by all the references to Hercules that we will find later on. Whoever the owner was, you can really tell how much he was into hunting. And here you can see a room where all the faces of the hunting are represented, including the initial sacrifice to the goddess Diana to hope that she will bring luck and will help the hunters get a good prey. Here's showing the hunting of deers, but in another room that we're gonna visit later, there's the hunting of wild beasts like tigers and lions that they were bringing to Rome or around the empire for the gladiators to fight. You can even see the logistics of the hunt here, um, how they were carrying the big animals into cages, into big ships, and there were different boards that took care of the logistics, and sort of uh, delivering them to different parts of the empire, and how they were also storing and sending the animals to Rome. In this room you can see a very mythical and very detailed mosaic representing Hercules and Dionysus.
this is the room where the master will have meals with his family and it's all themed after maritime mythology the main scene of this room is the poet arione who's riding a dolphin while playing the harp but you also have other creatures from the ocean like tritons the narrates you can tell it's one of the chambers of the master because it's way way more detailed and there's way more attention to how the mosaics are made by the artists of course the master had more than one apartment so we just visited the southern apartment now we're gonna go to the northern apartment and in the meantime we're gonna talk a little bit about who made these mosaics most of the artists were artists from africa that the master put to work on this and they had very large teams especially for the bigger rooms and the most important rooms that's why there's so much detail and it's incredible that all this work still preserved now almost 2000 years later and every detail every scene you can still tell what's happening what's going on obviously look at the surroundings of the villa it's just like immersed in a beautiful nature because um, we are in a part of Sicily it's way high uh, on sea level I mean it snows here in winter and this is probably the most important room in the whole villa which is the basilica it's the most official place it's where the master had his throne there yeah. and the guests and other people would come here and talk to him uh, while he was sitting on the throne the basilica is really big it's about 100 roman feet so it's 30 meters long and it's the only room that was decorated with more expensive and precious uh, polychrome marbles on the floor also on the walls just like, and obviously everything was designed in a way that people would be subjected to the magnificence of the master sitting on his throne matter of fact the guests back in the days would made go a little bit around show the magnificence of the villa show all the decorations like the mosaics of the other rooms maybe the important guests were made to go inside through a different entrance and then they would end up here talking to the master um, so that was to give an idea of the importance of the person who owned this place and we are in the northern apartment of the masters and one of the rooms is showing the myth of ulysses and polyphemus it's one of the main challenges ulysses had to face in the odyssey he and his companions were captured by the cyclops and the cyclops polyphemus ate two of his companions and ulysses to escape offered a cup of wine you can see it here in the mosaic once giant was drunk ulysses managed to blind him and if you watched our video on catania we were in acitrezza where there are these archipelago these big rocks in the ocean and those are the rocks that said polyphemus angered by being tricked by Ulysses like this he threw while blind and it's a story about how the rationality and Ulysses being smart and full of wit wins over the irrational polyphemus who so just thinking about eating and drinking about rationality taking control over the instincts It's interesting because when we walked out of the master's room I could smell some laurel and there are some laurel plants here smell very strong and back in the days laurel was used as a symbol of you know being educated and of victory it was worn as a crown people would make crowns of laurel and wear it to represent the victory or the high status like the emperor julius caesar for example it's always uh, shown wearing this and apollo was said to wear one so i wonder if these plants were here all the time and, and they also used the laurel back in the days in this villa After these beautiful ancient mosaics here in this villa we're gonna go and move to ceramics so we're gonna go and visit Caltagirone which is a city that has a very old tradition of making ceramics and terracotta and it's some of the most beautiful art and artisan craft you can find in Sicily so let's go check it out The town of Caltagirone has been a very prolific ceramic production center since the Middle Ages and we were very lucky to be there during the Ceramic Fest which exhibited their creations. One of the most distinctive ceramic products is undoubtedly the mohair, which has become a symbol of Sicily. 
And legend has it, behind these vases is a very passionate and tragic love story. According to the legend, during the Arab reign of Sicily, a local woman and an Arab warrior fell deeply in love. But one day, the woman found out the warrior had a family back home to return to. To ensure he'll forever be hers, she decided to decapitate him and turn his head into a vase. Tragic stories aside, artists in Caltagirone have made more heads for generations. Nowadays, some designs are incredibly realistic or true works of art. Walking around Caltagirone, you'll see many workshops and you can also find ceramics scattered all over town. The center of Caltagirone is a UNESCO heritage site, but we couldn't help but notice the dozens of for sale signs on many balconies. Like many other places in Sicily, Caltagirone is undergoing a demographic crisis. So bad, it joined the One Euro Houses project in hopes to repopulating and restoring its city center. We also noticed how the public spaces are a bit abandoned and not looked after as they should. No one looks after anything here. And it's a shame because the places are places of insane beauty. Even has, has really high potential. Yeah, even the Museum of Ceramics we decided not to go because for two reasons. One, it, apparently it's just a warehouse. They just track a bunch of pieces there without description, without history, without a logic. And two, it's almost impossible to find the entrance. The main entrance is closed off. There's no sign saying that. And then there's a secondary entrance that is also hidden and there's just a piece of paper saying this is the entrance but then still closed off like the way around to get to the museum it's really complicated there's no direction whatsoever it's a shame because it should be the main thing in the city but it's just abandoned the town center is all late baroque architecture it's a unesco heritage site for a reason and it's very 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 majestic and beautiful the churches are incredible. There are over 60 churches in Caltagirone. There's a place here that does really good pins and really good panelle called Pinze, and it's right next to one of the main sites of Caltagirone, which is the Scalinata di Santa Maria de Monti, that we're gonna go and visit right after. So, vamos! It's a very typical Sicilian street food called panello. It's made with chickpea flour, made into a paste, then cooked down and fried and usually eat them with a bit of lemon on top and a bit of pepper, so you... Oh, good. Mm. Oh my god, it's so good. I miss this so much. But it's really harder to find in Eastern Sicily, so as you go inland and towards Palermo, it gets more common. One of my favorite street food here. They also gave us some special gourmet arancini made with uh, salt fish. These are like very unique, that's a very unusual taste. And the great thing about this place is that they make it on the spot. Most places when you buy arancini they're ready. And uh, other places they have them ready and then they fry them. Here they just make them on the spot. So we had to wait a little bit but they're fresh and I'm sure that's gonna be... <laughs> mm. Amazing, you can also feel the mint. Yes. Yeah. A very typical combination in Sicily is saltfish, aubergine and mint. Um, yeah, it's all here. So good. I love that they serve it in these plates made of ceramic. They look like prickly pear leaf. And last but not least, the pinza. Which is kind of like pizza, but way lighter. Um, with a very easy to eat dough, like it feels very airy. Mm. It's very good. This is tuna and this little pieces of fried onion. The tomato sauce is very sweet. I really like the tomato sauce that they make. Mm. Totally recommend this place and it's right next to the main attractions. Mm. This is the Chiesa del Gesù, 
which is the, the only church in Caltagirone that survived the earthquake of 1693. So Caltagirone is also considered a city of the Noto Valley, which is you know that part of Sicily that got completely flattened by the earthquake in 1693. We made videos about Noto and about Modica, so you can check them out. So all of these cities were rebuilt using a late Baroque architecture. And this one church was the only one that survived the earthquake and it's still standing. It's hard in this part of Sicily to find churches or buildings that predate the earthquake because it was a really devastating event. Now I have a challenge for you. We have no. 142 <laughs> steps no. to climb. And those steps are very particular. They're the main attraction for Cartagena for a reason. I'm gonna explain you more when we go and walk them up. So this is the Scalena di Santa Maria del Monte. As you can see, the bottom of the stairs have tiles of ceramic of Caltagirone. And the interesting thing is every 10 steps, the style changes. So these 142 steps are sort of representing the different uh, styles, the different eras of Caltagirone ceramic making. So at the beginning, you would have figurative and floral geometric style. Then you would have the Arabic style. Then you would have the Norman style, then the Swabian. If you go up and you should go up, these 142 two steps try to pay attention and, and see how every 10 steps things change and as you go up the stairs obviously you have these beautiful side streets with a lot of flowers right now it's the beginning of summer so there's jasmine you can smell jasmine in the air and it's just like the beautiful colors of all the flowers and also a lot of ceramic artisan old shops like this one there is showing another important theme in the sicilian ceramic another important symbol together with the more heads it's the pine cone so what the pine cone represents it has two meanings first of all pine is a tree that never loses its foliage it's always green it's a sempre verde like we call it in italian symbol of eternal strength Second of all, the pine cone is full of seeds, so it's also a symbol of prosperity and fertility. So there are two great reasons why you should do this 100, well, there are many, these 142 steps and why I suggest you do them towards sunset time. Number one, you have an incredible view of Caltagirone at dusk, which is beautiful like every 10 steps more or less you you have a new angle of the city then you are welcomed by the beautiful view of the cappuccini the dome and the church and then you're also rewarded with the great mosaic that represents and celebrates the arrival of the normans in sicily so let's go have a look at it and talk about that story the normans in sicily had a huge role in the culture and in the development of Sicily. The Normans arrived here right after the Arabs, right in the middle of the Middle Ages. And while the rest of Europe was going through the Middle Ages, which is called the Dark Ages for science and development, the Normans made a true miracle. They basically managed to create a society where Arabs and Normans were living in harmony. Official documents and any sort of manuscript, any sort of book that was making the culture circulate was in Greek and in French and in Arab. A lot of people, a lot of scientists, mathematicians, philosophers moved to Sicily during the time because there was this exchange of culture and they could study the mathematics with the Islamic mathematicians that were genius. You know, normally when you conquer a place, you would get rid of the previous rulers. So, but the Normans, instead of expelling the Arabs from Sicily. They created this beautiful multicultural society. And one example is one of the greatest intellectual of the court of one of the kings of Sicily was Muhammad al-Idrisi, who made at the time the most accurate map of the world. He also wrote an entire encyclopedia to go with the map describing all the places that were in the map. Unfortunately, later on when the Spanish took over, uh, they expelled all the Arabs and they just sort of like turned Sicily in a giant playground for the rich Spanish. But that, that's, that's one of my favorite parts of the history of Sicily because so many very different cultures, not just coexisted together, but they made each other better. And I feel like that's something we need nowadays because the world is going a bit the opposite direction. There's a lot of hate towards who's different, but you know, 
If they did it in the Middle Ages, we can also do it now. In our next episode, we will dive deeper into the Arab Norman Sicily by visiting its capital, Palermo. We will also try some insane street food, so stay tuned and make sure you don't miss that.